But let's uh, quickly move on now to our top story, and that is uh, the status of Jammu and Kashmir today. What was the situation today? And was the peace on the ground, and I should mention the relative peace on the ground, enough to give us an indicator that going forward, the situation would regularize sooner than later. The government has put out such videos to show that thousands in the Kashmir Valley turned out for Eid prayers, exactly a week after the center scrapped the special status of the state and divided and downgraded it into two union territories. Everything, it went off peacefully. That is something everybody was hoping and praying that let Eid, day, Eid prayers go off peacefully. Restrictions on communication and connectivity but as you are aware, we are facilitating people to talk to the near and dear ones. There have been some reports in the media about firing by security agencies and deaths. And I would like to strongly reiterate and categorically deny that any firing incident has happened in the state. These are pictures from Punch. Along with this, the government listed the number of people who offered prayers in other towns. But Srinagar is different. There are no numbers provided, just a mention of prayers at hundreds of mosques. Some parts of the city still appear relatively deserted, and the Home Ministry mentioned that there were some protests in parts of the state. There have been some isolated incidents of stone pelting, again at an insignificant level. Police handled these locally and dispersed the protesters. There are no major injuries barring one or two individuals. The government says that phone connectivity, though drastically restricted to a few phones of officials, is widely available. At 300 public points, at district commissioner's offices, police stations and police posts, over 5,000 calls were made in one day in Srinagar. While the absence of widespread violence on Eid is welcome, there are still no signs on when Jammu and Kashmir can return to a state of normalcy. Mainstream political leaders like Mehbooba Mufti and Umar Abdullah remain under arrest. There is no internet for most and large groups are not allowed to assemble even though there is no official curfew. I have to walk several kilometers. Even media is not being allowed to move. And Farooq Abdullah would normally come to this mosque and offer uh, offer Eid prayers and so are other all VIPs who live here in Sanwar and Gupkar area. All the all the major mosques have been shared, waiting if they can be allowed, but that is not that is not happening. Even phone lines are shared, mobile phones or landlines, internet and broadband is shared. I could not say Eid Mubarak to any of my friends if they are listening to me, Eid Mubarak to everybody. I could not even say Eid Mubarak to my mother if she is listening, Eid Mubarak to Imam. Nobody was expecting that there would be such restrictions. With Nazir Masoodi, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. Well, Nazir joins us now. And uh, Nazir, uh, Eid Mubarak to you. You certainly deserve that Eid Mubarak from all of us uh, over here, even though earlier in the day you were unable to call your mother or your friends. Nazir, what is the situation at the moment? Uh, because by and large, according to the Home Ministry, things across the state have been peaceful. There have been some instances of violence, but by and large, nothing out of the ordinary. Is that your sense on the ground as well? Well, uh, Home Ministry or the state government has actually issued statements. They made uh, give briefings here, talked about how the situation has evolved during the day there has been they say Eid prayers at different places. Yes, there were Eid prayers in the Mohalla mosques, but there was no Eid prayer in major mosques or the Eidgah ground is in Srinagar. And Vishnu, it's not the first time when such restrictions have been put in place and Eid prayers were not allowed at different major mosques like the Hazrat Bal Shrine, Jamia Mas, Eidgah grounds or in Sanwar uh, Darga Shrine here. Uh, so, it, in 2016 that happened, at that time there was civilian unrest. Only difference this time is, the people are largely peaceful, which even police accept. There have been some stray incidents of violence, but compared to the magnitude of the issue problem, people have maturely behaved. They, whoever I have talked to say, 
they are saying they don't want to resort to violence. They want this whole thing should remain peaceful, but there should not be any pressure cooker like situation. The next step, what people are expecting the government should take is to reach out to people. Now there has been more than one week now. Valley is completely shut. Whatever they think, like not a single shop has opened. It has either has been subdued. I couldn't see a single child coming out and buying, you know. Uh, toys to celebrate Eid, and there was not a toy shop even uh, you know open today. But, you know, that's, so they were. That's interesting that you, you in should morning, mention that in evening, because it's yeah. interesting and very uh, to to get that ground report from you because what the government has said on Sunday, yesterday there was and I quote from this report it's a Home Ministry slash uh, Jammu and Kashmir uh, administration report they say and I quote there was further relaxation resulting in a large number. Uh, in a large volume of traffic and traffic jams in some areas, over 50% of shops were open and each shopping was done unhindered. There was massive sale of goats and sheep in Srinagar and other parts of the valley. Over 2.5 lakh sheep were sold in Srinagar. So would it be fair to say, Nazir, that what you're talking about, the shutdown of many shops, uh, the absence of toy shops for children, that was in some areas, while in other areas, the situation was different. Well, Vishnu, we show what we see. Correct. Right now, I'm showing you there's relaxation and these all vehicles are moving. And in the morning, I was showing this, this road was completely deserted. Yes. Same road I was showing in the morning. So we would not add or subtract anything. We will show the truth. We will tell people truth. What exactly is on the ground, we will show it. Uh, the fact is, uh, Eid has been subdued. Large number of population has not been able to offer Eid prayers. But well, I am again saying, it is not the first time such restrictions have been imposed in Kashmir. It happened in 2016 as well. But this time, the only, only difference is, people have been largely peaceful, which even police are accepting. You know, giving number of goats and the sheep, how many were sold, that is not the indicator of the peace. Sure. The fact is, government should now look towards when they are going to open schools. Children, I want my children go back to school tomorrow. And what are they I saying should, about for that? For more than one week, they have not been to school. Yeah, in, yeah. And, and so what, what are they saying first? I, I, it is very hard. Number one, Trust me, for the last one week I have not been able to meet my children because when I leave home early in the morning they are sleeping. When I go back home they are again sleeping. That is one thing. But, but that, that's our fault is, because we are letting you go home. Uh, that, that's, go that's our fault and you, we have a common boss, you can tell her at some stage. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but the question is schools, <laughs> Nazir, when will schools open? If that's, if that's a, a, a first yeah. uh, you yeah. know, indicator of a, of a return to normalcy, what are yeah. they saying? Well, uh, so far I'll tell you, what are, what are the indicators of normalcy when people are going to open their shops on yep. their own? So far, no group, no party has issued any shutdown call. No party group, no individual has asked people to protest. All the leaders before they were put under house arrest have appealed people to remain calm, be patient. And I'll tell you, and today's Eid is all about peace, saving lives. And this is actually defining moment for all of us you know okay. nobody should die okay, whatever Nazir, has happened has happened let us fight it constitutionally legally no i i and i i think if there's any one message on eid it's that let let there not be uh, a loss of lives nazi don't go away anywhere i just want to introduce uh, my other panelists uh, on the program today jaydev uh, Ranade, former uh, RAW Additional Secretary and in the Cabinet Secretary, thanks so very much for being with us. Uh, we are also joined by Dr. Samir Kaul of the National Conference. Uh, Rakesh Kaul, the Kashmiri activist with us in the studio. Ilyas Nazir is an advocate, also a Kashmiri. Uh, and we've got, in a sense, two Kashmiri advocates with us. I, I, I suspect they might have a separate opinion, but let's see. And to get an idea, uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam also with us. Uh, and also uh, joining us from Washington, D.C., uh, Sadhanan Dhume, uh, resident fellow at the American Enterprise uh, uh, Institute, to give us his sense of how this is being seen from an international standpoint. We've got several international reactions which have come in. What does this say for India uh, from an international standpoint? Has, is there anything which indicates that the, the, the main powers have actually don't believe that what India is doing is correct? Uh, we'll be analyzing that with Sadhanan in a moment from now. Uh, but let me come to you first, Mr. Anare. You've seen the ground reports, and there are numbers as well of the people who've turned out to pray 
uh, in, in all sorts of places, Badgam 13,000 people, Kulgam 11,500, Baramulla 10,000, government numbers. Do you believe that this is that first step we were all waiting for towards a return to normalcy? I think this is an important first step because the government would not have uh, you know, uh, eased the restrictions if they were apprehensive that there's going to be uh, uh, violence. Uh, the fact that they have eased it, I think, was to test the waters to see how the people are uh, coming out, how they're reacting. And uh, if they keep getting assurances that things are okay, and that will be not just by this one demonstration, it will also be the reports that they get. Yes. I think there will be an easing. It is in the government's interest, in my view, or in any um, uh, authority's interest, to now start uh, reaching out to the people and to start pacifying the situation. So I think the government would be well aware of this and uh, that is the direction they will move in. But this yep. is the first step. Uh, Lalita Kumar Bangalab, how do you believe or how do you suggest that process of reaching out, uh, of, 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 of telling people to remain calm, uh, of uh, introducing them to the, the economic measures which have been announced by the Prime Minister should take place? Who does this? Uh, first of all, Vishnu, let me wish everybody Eid Mubarak. Um, and I think the process of reaching out has already started. As you know, NSA Doval has been going around Kashmir, talking to people there. Uh, also, as has, is obvious, uh, part of the curfew was lifted today so that Eid could be celebrated by those who would celebrate it uh, in Kashmir. And I think uh, Prime Minister Modi's speech has laid it down very clearly what the plans of the government are with regard to how to take Kashmir forward, not just Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, with regard to winning people over, it's going to take some time. Not everybody is in favor, as we know, but uh, a lot more people actually have welcomed this decision than I think is being reported. Now, uh, there on, is bound on, to on be On what some basis dissent. do you say that? There always is when just, such just, just, huge change takes just, place. Just trying to understand on but, what basis. I'm sorry, say what? On what basis do you say that a larger percentage of people or number of people in Jammu and Kashmir believe that making Article 370 useless is a good step? On what basis do you say that, you know, I mean, that you have you reached that conclusion? First of all, you have seen that the streets of Kashmir today were, uh, especially Srinagar, were far more peaceful than uh, even all of you expected it. Yes. Now, I think that the people of Kashmir have come to terms up to a certain extent. Certainly not totally. It can't happen so quickly. Let's not kid ourselves about that. But I think they have accepted that what has happened has happened. Now that Article 370 is in the past, everybody is looking to move forward, especially the government. And we are well aware that it's not going to be as easy as perhaps it sounds as I'm saying on television or anybody else is saying. We're well aware that we have to work very hard in order to see that Kashmir okay. catches up and that the Kashmiris who are unhappy or who may be unhappy with what has happened will understand that this is not being done in order to strip anybody of any rights but in order to see that there is a more even and perhaps the development that should already have happened many years ago in that state. Now, I, again, I mean, Ladakh is, of course, now a separate uh, union territory. We'll but talk again, about Ladakh let's in a not while. talk about Ladakh. Lad uh, the Lada sure. Ladakh Ma'am, I just want to go the across. The Ladakhis have welcomed this sure. move. But they have without Kashmir a doubt. I just really we are worried about, not yeah. even so much Jammu. Yeah. And we do know that it's going to take some effort in reaching out. Okay. And we are doing it already. When we will continue Kaur, to do it. Do you believe that the real worry now from a, a law and order standpoint was not before Eid, not during Eid, but what happens after Eid? Because to have tens of thousands, and we're looking at what, 40, 43, 45, minimum thousand uh, CRPF Jawans on the ground, Jammu and Kashmir police on top of that, and over and above that, a much larger number of Indian Army soldiers, you know, on the ground deployed in this current manner is perhaps untenable. They have different responsibilities. So is the worry going forward now that Eid is over? Uh, first things first, Vaishnav. Uh, first of all, uh, Eid Mubarak to the entire uh, Muslim fraternity in the India, brethren of India, and more so in Kashmir where your Eid, correspondence Eid Mubarak is, to all fraternities. All of all, yes. entire. And it has been subdued in Kashmir. It is not so pleasing to hear about it. No. But anyway, circumstances sometimes are, are so that yes. even if you don't want it to be like this, 
it has to be like this. Uh, more often, uh, JNK per se, when I talk of JNK per se, more often we have to believe uh, the figures and uh, stats which are being put by the government. You disagree and with them? No, we trust them. Okay. We have to trust them. We have no other alternative of, of uh, probably doubting them. So going them. forward, do you believe Going forward, that the most important is what is, uh, what's most important, which I have been uh, of, yeah. of presenting in other debates also. No, no, is but that what is that answer? I, I tell you, I tell you. Yeah, most I'm important is that, that I don't need yeah. to browbeat about probably what has been done when you said in your opening remark also that an autonomy, perceived autonomy which Kashmiris would feel because 370 yeah. would give them. So that's all gone. So when so that is gone. going forward is the main security concern now. I feel the most important on Eid we should have reflected the magnanimity of the state wherein political leaders, political voice when on one hand we say they have no say. When on one hand we say there are two families so you which are all through corrupt. They have is that removing 370 is not removed but, tech, but you know making it useless is, is empowering for you, right? Removing it, it, 35A it, it, is empowering for you. Is it that should what be you're empowering to say? for the state as it such. It should be empowering. But but what's more important is the intentions of a government, intentions of a dispensation to get translated into the action. What is my perceived image about that when I lift 370, <coughs> there is going to be huge good for Kashmir, good for uh, the Jumu, yeah, so good what, for the what state. What is your perception? I feel first thing I would have seen forward to when, we, when I heard the Prime Minister's lecture about it. Okay, you know, so reaching, you, you welcome that. The, you welcome what he had reaching to, say. to the people. Reaching, you felt that and he second, was he was successful second. in reaching <coughs> out. Yes. And second, as far as the important is, speech. when on one hand my dispensation says that there were two three families which had you know all into corruption, they looted all Jammu and Kashmir. I thought they would have no say. I don't need to put them behind bars. Okay. I don't need so to put them under So a couple of captivity. important points, I, and I want to go across uh, to Dr. Sameer Call. Dr. Call, uh, the, the couple of points he mentioned over there among many, but these struck me as being important. Losing faith in mainstream political leaders is one of the points that he's mentioned. Secondly, he sees that removing Article 370 uh, is potentially empowering. And the third point that he mentioned, which struck me, is that, go, that the, the manner in which the Prime Minister actually said what he had to say took people along, right? So if, if that is what people say, why do you believe that the large majority on the ground don't believe that? Do you have numbers or statistics to dispute what Mrs. Kumara Mangalam was saying a moment back. First of all, there is a small reason to be happy that I've seen a fellow Kashmiri Pandit not being completely one-sided and trying to talk in terms of a balance and I'm a bit happy about that. Con considering the entire discourse that I've observed over the previous few months. But please explain to me, Vishnu, that the entire communication discourse before the removal of the article and through it now, till now, and maybe till after that, is, co is completely shrouded in an iron curtain and it is completely one-sided. Yes. So all the figures that come out are, 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 like he said, we don't have any option, didn't you hear him? There is no option, there is no choice, there is only one-sided discourse. There are figures that are churned out and you and and my country better believe it. But, but because there is no other curse. There is a huge propaganda machinery. If you will notice, there's a huge discordance between what is churned out by the Reuters, by the BBC. And we can we can keep calling them enemy countries when at this moment. But these are independent no, but media I, outside yeah, the country. No, I, I, which I is appreciate telling that, you one Kaur, thing. One this. minute, one minute. So there is a there is a discordance. There is a, let, let me complete it. Let Go me ahead. Yes. It, there is a discordance between what we are told and what are the what the rest of the media is saying. No, now but, you but, are asking me to believe this, and and there is a same set of posts. If you see the pictures and the posts that are coming out, the government agencies come out with that. The ANI comes out with that. Some, some media companies which are participating in this, in this propaganda war, they are coming out with the same posts. There are, there are journalists being ferried around in, in helicopters and in armored vehicles and, and, and instructed to churn out a particular kind of discourse. And we have no option but to believe it. So where is the other? Okay. Uh, everyone no, else you, is you make out. some very valid everyone, points about how about how many in this in the media. It's a larger argument. Won't get into that now. Are perhaps not independent in the in the least bit. Having said that, 
the, the, the report by, by whether it was Reuters or the BBC has been point by point disagreed upon by the government. They say that yes, there have been protests, they, but the, the, the numbers of 10,000 which have gone about on social media uh, or even of several hundred is not necessarily accurate. Uh, the extent of injuries, while obviously we've seen reports, some from journalists like Siddharth Vadrajan, uh, are absolutely true. And while even today the Home Ministry has said that there are cases of two people being seriously injured, it's, it's not out of control. Uh, it's not as widespread uh, uh, you know, as many people would have worried about. So is this not perhaps an indicator, that, and, I, and, I, and I need to phrase this carefully, that this situation is similar to what often happens not at in all. Jammu and Kashmir. Not at all. Uh, Vishnu, I, One minute. I not Dr. Call finish, I'll uh, come to you. Vishnu, got time. Yeah. Because in times, in times of crisis, in, in times of crisis, a Kashmiri who is religious, whether he's a Hindu or a Muslim, prays to God. Now, on particular occasions, particularly the Eid, it's the Mohalla Masjids which were kept open and there, were, there was extremely heavy security presence. And, and these people, the main places where people congregate, the Jama Masjid and the Said Sahib's shrine and many other major shrines were completely locked out, which we all know. Yes. Now, I mean, no amount of distortion can correct that. But maybe it helped in controlling the peace. But what peace are they worried about? If people are happy, why would anybody disturb peace? Okay, so you the know, other on one point, hand, the government says, okay, people okay, there one, are one second. I just happy. want to go across to then Ilyas. Then why do Nazir. they need to lock them out? Yeah, doctor, call one second. Doctor, call one second. I, I want to go across to Ilyas Nazir as well. Uh, it's a fact what he is saying that a large number of some of the most prominent mosques in Srinagar were shut yes. today. But the other way of looking at it is, if you look at the numbers of people who are out praying, assuming these numbers are accurate, Badgam, Kulgam, Baramulla, Bandipura, Kupwara, Tregam, Sopor, Pulwama. Right, even Pulwama, which has been a hotbed of late, the numbers are very encouraging. 13,000, 11,000, 10,000, 7,000, 3,500. We don't have be, numbers for Srinagar. It might be actually more is than this, that. Is this, is this not a positive indicator as well? Uh, but yes, Srinagar is a question mark. We don't have numbers on Srinagar. See, by and large, like I believe that there were three litmus tests after the 15, uh, 5th August episode. One was the uh, Friday, another is was Eid and next litmus test is uh, 15th August. Yes. By and large, Friday went peacefully. Now Eid went peacefully. The third test, litmus test is to be uh, done. By and large, the situation has been very peaceful and conducive. I completely reiterate what all Dr. Samir Cole has said. Having said that, you have given the figures of MHA where district Kulgam, for district Kulgam, you have given 11,000. Yeah, that allowed. combines two places in Kulgam. For example, yeah. in Kulgam, you have said that 11,000 yeah. people were allowed to uh, yeah. congregate at one place. Yeah. 11,000, I personally belong to Kulgam district where the Kazi total population... 5,500 and Kaimo 6,000. Yeah, That's how they were arrived 11, at 11,000 for district Kulgam. 11, and I belong to district Kulgam where the total population is more than 10 lakh people. There are 5 lakh registered voters in district Kulgam. And you can easily contemplate the percentage of the people who were allowed to congregate at so what this you're auspicious saying is occasion. The, the, the numbers See, were not, I'm not happy. sizable enough. That's not at all. The numbers, the numbers were not, are, are, not, are minuscule. It did not boil down to three, even three percent. Uh, Having uh, said that, since it has all been, hey. all, all been like like this week has been very peaceful. I'm very happy for that. That there has been so no So you're casualty. saying that but you're happy. It's peaceful, but the numbers that we are seeing, these numbers by it's themselves very are a tiny percentage. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. an important important way of looking Vishnu, at I have it. An, yes. I, have an, I have a point. I don't feel uh, it suffices anybody's purpose to refute these numbers. No, no one refutes. I am pretty but, but sure. He's about, but he's, no, what he's saying is a point. No, these numbers represent a percentage I'm, of I'm, people I'm, I'm who could have been out, uh, I'm coming to that. I am pretty sure yeah. see, everybody would have been uh, more than eager to offer prayers today. See, look at the look at the face. Yes, but they have more have than they, they've not been able to. Is the point? That that's what I'm saying. So more than more than people would have been willing to come and offer prayers. No, but, but they were oh, not yes, able to what, what I'm coming to. So what, what, I'm coming what to. is the point? I'm you're telling making? you. Yes. So if I if I come and boast of myself that probably I am I'm reaching to the normalcy because five thousand people have offered prayers in Kulgam might be an uh, exaggeration. Exaggeration and undermining probably what is my perceived threat. That's precisely I what I have said. Because on this day we have been part of Dr. Samir Cole. I'm I'm, I'm I'm also from a medical fraternity. I keep meeting him. I don't know whether he will. But recommend. just make your point. Yeah. My point most important is that today would have been a day 
for an if 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 an indian state this would have been the best ideal day for probably offering these political leaders to come and offer their namaz at any okay. place that's and, an important and, and, point and, and and if i don't do it samir do you feel if i don't do it now one sec, i can't do it on 15th of august samir call i can do it tomorrow samir call do you feel disappointed that uh, umar abdullah or for that matter mehbooba mufti were not allowed to go apparently to any mosque uh, and and offer prayers is that was that his expectation or certainly yours i would assume it was vishnu vishnu i i completely agree with the gentleman rakesh before me that this would have been an ideal occasion if you reaching out does not mean showing doctored and selected parts of interactions of of our mr doval or somebody else reaching out means genuinely reaching out to people the polity of that place but i suspect i am worried about one other thing because the one of the parts of the agenda of the government is to implant new political seeds on the on the on the permanent of jnk spe political spectrum what seeds and 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 decry all the earlier ones label them give them bad names say yeah. that they have been just plundering and looting the people and therefore now we are going to have new polity and these are going to be your new leaders in that attempt i i knew they wouldn't release them but it would have been really really so, magnanimous it would it have ha been a step in the right okay. direction okay no, no, after no, no, having one give one dealt them a death i want to i want to actually by taking away the thing i'll come to you in a moment i want to actually look at the larger uh, world sort of reaction to uh, the situation in kashmir as well sadaran has been waiting for a while thanks very much once again sadaran for being with us would you say that given the international reactions from just about every major power uh, perhaps somewhat with the exception of china uh, this has been accepted as something that india has done we've done it within our framework and that num nobody should really protest uh, you know in a very vociferous manner china has concerns about ladakh uh, but even in the language they've used so far about jammu and kashmir uh, wasn't it perhaps not as strong as a lot of people would have expected So, which is a couple of quick points. Um, the first, of course, is that still early days. It's still sort of you know the still absorbing and complete. Uh, that said, only at the level of how the great powers, uh, India has. Okay, Sadhana, so we, we are losing your sound. I think uh, if you can just plug plug in your uh, the the. Uh, the microphone once again we'll just just sort that out uh, we'll just sort that out and we'll come back to him in a moment would you like to come in on that how is the world actually seeing this uh, isn't this actually a big foreign policy success for us thus it far it is it is uh, undoubtedly in fact the um, uh, reactions have been very very restrained and uh, most of the big powers have uh, either not said anything or they've uh, tacitly acquiesced to what has been done Uh, the chinese as you said are the only ones who made a little noise uh and that too they have been careful for for reasons of their own uh they have of course expressed support to pakistan that they will help them and back them in taking it up in the un but uh that's about the limit of it as far as the middle eastern countries or the muslim yeah. nations are concerned yeah even there uh by and large the, the uae reaction, has been yeah, very yeah, very well very and that is a huge Two thing a huge thing we really? expect that the changes would improve social justice and security and confidence of the people in local governance is what the united arab emirates has said exactly this is the strongest possible so i think i think what people are going to look for yeah. and i i it's not a digression but it may seem like one I, is what's going to happen in the future they're going to look at the human rights uh, situation i think that's what and that will be some time in uh, in the future okay but right now i think uh, we must take into account the fact that there is heavy security there have been restrictions on movements probably uh, mosques have been selectively uh, closed yes. i mean some mosques uh, that would be keeping in view the uh, security situation they didn't want it to get out of hand and i think that is something which is uh, uh, you know a has to be accepted by, uh, sort of yeah situation. because it's a balance that they have to right. uh, draw Vishnu, you know. I just want to go back to Sadaran Dhume. Sadaran, uh, good to have you back. Your views on the international reaction? Would you agree that, by and large, this has been a success for India, given the international reactions? Yeah, we should let me make a very few quick points. Uh, the first is that if you're looking at the reaction of the great powers, I think the point you made is absolutely correct. India has uh, much to be encouraged by. Uh, 
the Russians came on very strongly. The U.S. has not condemned it. It, it sort of reiterated uh, some of the language that India had used. Uh, the Chinese made a tepid comment, and it, you know, it, it had more to do. It, it struck me as being quite pro forma uh, about Ladakh, um, and certainly would have been very disappointing from a Pakistani perspective. And I think that to that extent, it, it just you know, it reflects the fact that. India has a certain amount of heft and stature, and the country that is really trying to internationalize this Pakistan has for various reasons to do with its own kind of domestic, uh, economic, and political and cultural issues. It just no longer has the heft to make this international in the way it did, say, 25 years ago. So I think that that's sort of point number one. Um, second, I would not celebrate too quickly, though, because there is a lot of underlying concern. Um, the kinds of things where you're hearing is that, you know, generally speaking, all the way from Kargil in 1999 uh, or to Uri and Balakot, India has been perceived as a responsible status quo power in the region. Uh, it's very difficult to portray the suddenness of this move uh, in those terms, though I do recognize that it's uh, wildly popular in, uh, in, in much of India. So I think that is a question mark. And of course, the other thing that Mr. Ranade pointed out, uh, a lot of this is going to depend on how the human rights situation is handled. Yeah. Uh, if the human rights situation is handled deftly, um, I think that there will be a certain amount of uh, patience and forbearance in the in the world. But if the human rights situation goes out of hand, and nobody, with due respect to you know Ms. Kumar Mangalam and others, nobody can sort of claim that this is even remotely resembling normalcy. Because if this were you know if if this were uh, uh, an even vaguely normal situation. Uh, your correspondent would be able to wish his mother happy Eid. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. No, it's so, not a normal situation. Um, by so no means. we have to sort of see how this is going to play out over the next... But Sadharan, let me ask you this. Normal. I said it would take time. Right, fair enough. I, Sadharan, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, for the, all the reasons you, you spelt out, isn't Pakistan potentially more dangerous to India now than it's been in a long time, given the fact that they've had no international reception, whatever they've said, by and large, has not really had any impact whatsoever? So we'll see, right? So we have really, you've, we've, I mean, the, the envelope has been pushed. It puts Pakistan in a real bind because the only weapon that Pakistan has had traditionally is the weapon of terrorism. But at this moment, when they're in the middle of an IMF program, when they have the sword of the FATF sanctions hanging over their head, that's a risky card for them to play. Yes. Um, at the same time, of course, they're facing this tremendous sort of, you know, domestic pressure from their jihadist groups. Now, if you're an optimist, then you could look at this as a turning point that actually turns Pakistan irrelevant in this dispute. So it becomes, you know, it's still something that's going to continue for India. Uh, but if you're a pessimist, then, of course, there is room for this to uh, escalate quite dramatically with the influx of massive numbers of jihadists and so on. And I think on that, we just really don't have the, you know, we, we just have to see how this is going to uh, play out in the weeks and months ahead. You had a point to make I, very I, briefly. I yeah. feel, I feel, uh, see, strategically, if at all government of India was contemplating to remove this article, this there could have not been a better time than this. Okay. See, you look at Pakistan, it's at the lowest step, economically, strategically, geopolitically, they have been isolated and China had to some way, you know, they, they, have, they have some interest in Pakistan, they have to keep on doing it. America has its own problem. You have to understand, America has been almost on the knees of Taliban to get their army out. And, and Trump has to also win an election. So, so that this strategically, this would have been the best timing. However, yes. however, one word of caution, very, very important, Vishnu, in which I want entire media probability Just to support. Make the point, sir. That, yes. that make sure that we don't see it as a chest thumping exercise to further isolate those Kashmiris. Let's give each other a chance. Let's give this dispensation a chance. I couldn't ask for more uh, in, and I think that's absolutely accurate. Let's give this entire process a chance but let's hope for peace on the ground.